gives you a slight bit of red. So, you know, not lipstick, but even for men, it just, you know, pinkens it up a little bit, makes you look healthy. You know, Ronald Reagan wore makeup. There's no shame in that. Did you know that, Jordan? Yeah, that's how he won the election. Right? Or no, that's how uh, Nixon lost the election. Right. Not wearing makeup. Ronald Reagan, shut up. Yeah. Are you going to just uh, cough throughout this broadcast or because no, we're, we're okay. Cause we're on, we're on <laughs> damn it. I'm going to hear about this in therapy. Aren't I? I didn't shoot you. Okay. I was just pointing out that we're live <laughs> and you're over here coughing up a lung. Like we were just covered in COVID over here. Luckily spooky dude is the only one that doesn't give a shit. Cause she's already dead. Was Millie watching Spooky Doo while we were gone? Yes, she fed her, <laughs> and uh, she uh, she tried to give her wine, but just poured right through. Like it, was, it only happens in moonlight, though. It ran right through her. Yeah, it ran right through her like shit through a goose. I love that expression. We have so much to cover. How do I get oh, ready? Here, you have your headphones on. I know. I gave Jordan a pair of uh, glow green from the 80s. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I meant to give those back to you, but then I couldn't find them. No, 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 no. They're yours. And I know Jordan thinks that, you know, that headphones grow on trees. He's demonstrated that before when I gave him a brand new pair of Sony headphones, and I've yet to see him dome them. But I was uh, trying to give you the green headphones back, but I couldn't track you down in the airport. (laughs) <laughs> you couldn't track me down no i think you i think right? you pulled a fast one on me i did not pull a fast one on you that is such bullshit you were like i can't find my ticket and then you kind of wandered away and then i waited and waited and waited <laughs> well and then, here's what happened then i hopped is, on the plane uh, I, d- front row. I left my ticket back at the bar and then what happened was i said halfway there i was like oh i don't need my ticket i have it on my phone so I walked back and then cut in line because I was A12 or something. Yeah, and I was in the front row, you know? I was like, uh, you know, Bob Euchre, let's be on the front row. And sure enough, I was, and I went right to sleep. And uh, <laughs> not even because I was tired, but I could just tell the guy next to me wanted to talk. And, you know, I, I was just like, no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> and I uh, wanted to tell you, Jordan, that uh, I rode my bike yesterday for the first time in like six weeks. And, you know, I bought that bike because everybody was pressuring me to get a Peloton. You know, Harry, you need to exercise. Harry, you need to lose some weight. Get a Peloton. Everybody's getting a Peloton. Peloton, Peloton, Peloton. And I'm like, listen, if I'm going to, I'm not spending that much money, you know, on a, on a, on a bike that doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, you know, I was gonna go explore. I was, yeah, I was you know pulling a Seinfeld. You even spend that much money on a bike? It doesn't go anywhere. I don't know if that's a good, great impression, but no, that actually was pretty good. Thanks. And so I, you know, I was like, I'm gonna get a real bike for half the price, like a really nice bike for half the price, and be able to explore the city. Well, I did that, you know, a few months ago, and it i think three times <laughs> you know and i forgot the factor that it has been 105 outside and it's, it's just you, you just can't do it physically and now that it's cooled down a little bit i took it for a spin and then i realized that i didn't get any exercise at all the most exercise i got was walking the, the bike from the apartment to the sidewalk but because it's an electric bike that was my flaw and you can't you can turn it off but that just takes all the fun out of it. And so, you know, you do pedal a little bit, but you don't really have to pedal. And I find myself just not pedaling and riding it like it's a motorcycle all over the downtown San Antonio. It's fun. No exercise. I might as well, I'm getting more exercise right now speaking to you than I do on my bike. It's a reverse Peloton. It, it you actually gain calories when you ride it because <laughs> I, of course i have to stop at all the little uh, bars and haunts and get a bite or or a beard you know yeah 
So I'm act- I get I actually am fatter by the time I get back. Sounds like you're about this to get another bit. bike. This is not. <laughs> you have three bikes. So now, now I'm looking at Pelotons. <laughs> Mostly since I have so much room, you can see I'm not cluttered at all in here. I have bad news, Jordan. I don't know. Uh, oh, Jen's not coming on the call. And I don't yeah. think Hannah is either. I think it's just us. Bad news and good news, but it's mostly good news, okay? Okay. The bad news is, is that we are retiring Scooby Bones. <laughs> is it Scooby? Scooby Doom? Spooky Doo. Spooky Doo is retiring. This will be her last show on Harry's Pod. Biscuit is returning. Oh, thank roll. God. Biscuit is coming back this afternoon. She's refreshed. She's ready to have a much more high energy experience on the show than she's had. Management has had a discussion with her. Uh, she's out of, uh, you know, I don't want to call it, I don't want to call it rehab because we like to keep things private, but I, you know, I think we can all guess why she took 22 days off. I mean, come on. A leave of absence. The, yeah. 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 Yes, leave to spend more time with family. <laughs> uh, I've also been told to, we have other news too, Jordan. Um, first of all, my name is Harry Shoemaker. I'm the publisher of Beer Business Daily and Craft Business Daily and Wine and Spirits Daily. And with us is Jordan Driggers. And he's, uh, I don't know, what did you, what are you, editor of Beer Business Daily and Craft Business Daily? Yeah, beer editor. And this is Harry's pod, but that is, as I've said, a placeholder. And we are going to, we're going to rebrand the pod uh, definitely before the holidays. And so we're still haven't come up with a name, Jordan. I have a few in mind that I'd like to bounce off you uh, offline. So I don't want to get, you know, I'm not one of those people who likes to crowdsource and get everybody involved because then you end up with a stupid name. Yeah, you know, like like Harry's Pod. So, um, <laughs> and also, I don't want people rushing out and buying the URL before I can buy it. You know, and trying to, I've had that happen before. My uh, New York Times non-selling book, "Thank You for Drinking Beer," came out like five years ago. Uh, after the fact, I was like, you know, I ought to buy the URL. And I went and somebody had just bought it like a few weeks earlier. They wanted $10,000 for it. Do you know who it was? I up, yeah, I, I, I ended up buying it for not, not for $10,000. <laughs> okay. so I, I, I think I finally got them down to a thousand or something. So what can I you, don't even know if I still own it. <laughs> I was probably, about to say, what can you I, find on thankyoufordrinkingbeer.com nowadays? Uh, probably a link to a, to a defunct blog <laughs> and... <laughs> And maybe work, an Amazon link. The work in progress. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here's a secret that I'll tell because you're, you've listened this long to this podcast. <laughs> this is a secret for listeners. Okay. This is a bonus. Let me get real close to secret. Uh, if you go to Amazon and type in, thank you for drinking beer by Harry Shoemaker, the book will come up and it'll click over here and it'll say, look at a sample. All right. On the book. If you click on that, the entire book is in that sample. <laughs> All like 120 pages. I don't know why. It's a mistake. So, hey, just a little tip. If you don't want to spend the 1099, you can do it. You can do it all night long. Local band. Local band. So, um, when we talk about Oh, okay. So we're going to have the rebrand of the podcast before the holidays, and we're going to have new segments. Okay. And here are some of the segment titles. I'm not going to tell you what the segments are about, but I'll just tell you the titles. Okay. Let's do it. One of them is For Your Health with a Dr. Biscuit Shoemaker. Okay. Next one is Get Her Done. Okay. All right. Third one is one that we already do ad hoc is humorous anecdotes that mean nothing (laughs) (laughs) and the last one i'm still workshopping the title but it's 
what grinds my gears obviously oh. taken from the hit animated show uh the good father i think uh <laughs> i think what's the good father you know that show peter griffin family guy <laughs> family guy <laughs> i mean why why can't you define family guy from the good father he's a good father he's a family you know he's a good father he's, he's a family, family guy. guy yeah the wise guy I think uh, people are so, going to enjoy what grinds my gears. That'll, I think that'll be the, the fan favorite. I, I think so, too. What grinds my gears right now? I'm a pretty happy guy right now. By the way, I made my flight despite looking for you everywhere. Yeah, I saw you. You were on the front row, snoozing, lounging. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't really looking for me, were you? I was, yeah. I did a couple laughs. I mean, I was like C40, so I had some time to spare. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, jeez. What can you do? All right. I'm making this one breezy because I'm going to be, I'll be editing all weekend. So uh, MBWA, National Beer Wholesalers Association meeting, uh, the first in-person meeting in two years. First of all, attendance, it, it was a little bit sparse, but frankly, I was surprised it was that well attended. Right. And the parties were all well attended. Uh, there was one notable absence, which was Constellation, and that's usually the most raucous party. Uh, so I think there was more participation <laughs> in the general sessions because, uh, you know, people weren't out till uh, three in the morning drinking tequila shots, and, you know. Sure. Uh, but yeah, Constellation has a company-wide travel ban, so they did not attend, uh, although they yep. did sponsor the app, I noticed. Um, and that app, by the way, the WOVA app, uh, that was pretty killer. Uh, yeah. And I mean, it's a little disappointing that not more distributors were on it. It was, it was a lot of vendors like us. I mean, you could see who, you know, uh, how many people attended each session. You could see, uh, you could talk, chat with people uh, directly or indirectly, share contact information, you know, blah, yeah, yeah. It's like Facebook. It's like a little Facebook for the convention. Yeah. Now that has been by far the, the best app for a convention that I've, I've used. Most of the time, you know, they make their own and then it gets deleted as soon as you leave or you never use it. And then, right delete it to clear out some space, you know, month or two down the right. road. But the Wova app is pretty sweet, actually. I liked it. Yeah, we're, we're going to look into it. I don't know how expensive it might be out of our league for our little conference in January. By the way, this podcast is brought to you by the Beer, Wine, and Spirit Summits. Now in person, Jordan, in person, our, our first meeting in person. But the difference is it's going to be January 30th in sunny southern california jordan get out of the cold no it's get out of the snow and into the no uh this is the place where business gets done in the bev alcohol business you can come for the content it's going to be great a lot of sea level speakers mixed in with people who will actually say things and we also <laughs> <laughs> we have bill newlands the ceo of constellation uh, we have uh, Brandon Whit Whitworth, uh, CEO of Anheuser Busch. Uh, we have uh, Jim Cook of Boston Beer, and so on and so forth. January thirtieth, go to beernet.com and get your early bird discount before Halloween. <laughs> that, of course, is my rendition of Donkey Lady, which is a terrifying true story that I'm not going to tell on this broadcast because we're already running kind of deep into the broadcast without having said anything yet. Uh, so that's, what was your impression? Just kind of a general having gone to several MBWAs. Um, like you said, it was a little sparse, but I thought the enthusiasm um, was there. The show was, you know, slick and production wise was great. The speakers both in the industry and outside the industry were awesome. I, I thought uh, particularly outside of the industry I had some really good, engaging, entertaining speakers. And then as far as the show, 
it was a little different going from BI last week to MBWA this week. It seems like, you know, a year ago, everyone was kind of all the trade organizations were on the same page, kind of, you know, fighting through COVID. And now that we're kind of, kind of winding down from COVID, still there, but it seems like everyone's kind of getting back on their <laughs> own agenda, you know? I mean, do talk about, but uh, discus. Uh, where Sarah just came back from that, from their meeting in Austin, uh, where she talks about how, you know, there, it was very fired up and, and uh, you know, I think they're, they're, they're psyched because of this RTD craze that kind of fell into their lap. So of course they're excited. And of course that meeting is going to be more upbeat because they're like, we're getting into the beer space. And so then you contrast that with the BI meeting where it's all about how do we protect ourselves and how do we circle the wagon? That makes sense too, because they're being attacked. So they're the defenders, you put up forts when people are attacking and you hold rallies when you're the attacker. For Art of War, Jordan, I'd like you to read it over the weekend and have a book report on my desk Monday morning, 8 a.m. Central Standard Time in Triplicate. Thank you. Got it. I'll get started. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous. I mean, I, an administrative assistant, I get, you know, to help with, with tasks and stuff. But uh, like a um, Dolores, can you get me Jordan Driggers on the phone, please? You or, got it. Or rather, uh, rather, he's young. So will you text him? Okay. <laughs> Jordan, where are my headphones? Stop. Jordan, headphones do not grow on trees. Stop. Jordan. You have spent an entire month's subscription of one of our clients on headphones alone. Stop. Jordan, stop. Jordan, stop using headphones. Stop wasting headphones. Stop. Is that too far? Too long? I didn't get all of that. We can cut it and post. You didn't understand it or you just didn't hear it? Because uh, you you, your headphones don't work. <laughs> yeah, they don't work. But going back to... <laughs> Back to the real news. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. After I that sidebar. Saying. But yeah. um, you were talking about between the BI and discus, the MBWA, it feels like they're kind of caught in the middle, right? Yeah. Because, you know, BI was all about equivalency. At MBWA, they didn't really talk about equivalency all that much. I mean, they talked about, you know, the, the fear of spirits coming into the cold box, canned cocktails, RTDs. I feel like distributors, they, they want some of that action though, too, you know, as long as they're carrying it. Right. You're right. They're, they're a little bit conflicted. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of like, just keep our heads low. Yeah. The you MBWA know, didn't take with, a, a hard stance on that. As they shouldn't. Yeah. Um, yeah. The little pot shots, it makes it fun again. You know, it was, it was getting boring there for a few years. Everybody's getting along. Come on, let's. Let's That's what stand I'm saying. In a circle, fire arrows. That's what I'm saying. With with the pandemic winding down, everyone's kind of back on their their own agenda. But you know, it's just funny. Like if you look at the tech industry, like big tech, you know, they're all on the same page. You know, they're they're in more of an existential threat than we are, and at when or will ever be right now, especially with all this Facebook nonsense. They walk in lockstep. Big pharma does the same thing. Even if some of the smaller players aren't don't always agree, they get it, just get them in. Beer wine spirits. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're two, at least two different industries, probably three with if you split wine and spirits, which you should. Well, it's kind of funny too, because big tech is, I guess, you know, kind of partly responsible for this executive order is causing between the beer industry right now, too. Because the executive order is mainly for big tech, but they, you know, extended it kind of across all industries and now everyone in beer wine and spirits is commenting and not everyone likes <laughs> what they're commenting on and so now we're creating some rift with that and it's really right all That's, for nothing because yeah. it's <laughs> it's about well and, it, big and tech. it's a, like i mean jordan i think you came up with that title which i think is brilliant the industry's fighting in the comments section <laughs> and and it's true because you know Yes, the, we, we know these grievances. We all have them in our little hearts, right? Our little cold, commercial, capitalist hearts. And I'm saying we like each of the th three tiers. 
so we already had these grievances. There was just no public forum like a beer Facebook or whatever <laughs> to air them. So at least we keep it in the industry a little bit. No, 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 no. We fight on the government's website <laughs> with official lawyer documents. That's how we fight through our lawyers publicly that no other industry would ever do that. Yeah. Ones you can never delete. We're not, no, never <laughs> delete. Never go back and say, oh, well, that's not really what I meant. Well, your lawyer wrote it under oath. You know, I don't know, you're not under oath, but it's still kind of a, you know, it's a legal document in some sense. It's in the, you know, it's in the public registry or whatever. It's insane. But I, I mean, you know, I'm sure Reyes didn't want to engage. And, but, but, and, you know, it's just once somebody writes something, you know, the BA writes something, well, then the MBWA has got to say, well, fuck, we, you know, we got to put our interest. And then it just goes all the way down to, you know, Bob's barbecue pit. Is, <laughs> you know, it's unfair that his wine license costs more than his beer license. You know, it's just not fair because he wants a wine based margaritas. 2,000 comments, 2,000 comments on a thing that nobody's going to read. Like just what did Mike Mad Dog Madigan, what did he say? Uh, he said that uh, he doesn't really think anything's going to come of it, not on a federal level. And I mean, you're right. It's like a 1,000 comments. Some of these are 20 plus pages and uh, there's just no way. Uh, the TTV, I think um, someone has to, uh, someone has to read it before the TTV. I forget who, but uh, I mean, the bandwidth they have is already pretty tight. So, yeah, I, I think the TTB is is more of what folks should worry about than what's going to come of this executive order, because it, even if nothing becomes of the executive order, it sends a signal to the TTB. Hey, clean up this industry a little bit. It looks like they're not. It looks like it's not a happy bunch of campers over there from where True. we sell all we have to do is look at the number we don't have to we don't have to read the comments we don't even have to read them the sheer number of them tells us that this is a shit show and you're the regulatory body that's i'm not a lawyer i don't have special insight that's just my gut feeling what about you no i agree i mean it's like uh you know you see an article they're getting it's like uh getting ratioed you know you see a tweet and it has a million a million comments underneath it. That means something, something was wrong with, <laughs> with that tweet. You know, people took offense right. to that. <laughs> so, I've been on that. I've been on that side <laughs> of the equation before, and that's why, that's why well, I don't have Twitter on my phone anymore, just on my computer. So I, every horrible thought, I don't just immediately type it in. I have to actually go to a computer and log in. Not a whole lot of likes, yeah. not a whole lot of retweets, but a trillion responses. No. <laughs> I have the lowest engagement rate compared to how many subscribers I have. It's like I never get more than like two or three likes. And it's all the same people every time. Just automatic, you know, boom. Real people. Which I, are just... hey, by the way, I appreciate I appreciate you three. Don't please keep it's my only validation. Are they real people or are they bots? No, they, they're actually real people <laughs> in the in the beer industry. So it's the right people, but uh perfect. <laughs> Yeah, there is one that I suspect is a bot. It's called Canadian Beer Map. <laughs> and it and the reason I <laughs> think it's a bot is because they're either online 24 7 because it likes it like just within seconds every time. It might be you, spooky dude. I wouldn't put it past you, you little, you little piss ass sneaking up to Canada every night on your little devil wings. You know, back to the MBWA, it sure was good just to see everybody, albeit uh, when we were inside, it was through masks. And the bad thing about that is I couldn't recognize anybody, uh, you know, just walking around. Uh, but the good news is, is that nobody recognized me either. So it was nice to just, you know, be able to get through the lobby and where get where I needed to go. Sometimes you're in a hurry. You know what I mean? I'm no celebrity, Jordan, but you know, I'm a, I'm a little micro celebrity. You're definitely yeah. a celeb. And I, oh, I saw man. some people still stop you, even with your gator pulled up to your <laughs> right below your eyeballs and then your shades on and your bra hat on. And they'd be like, oh, hey, Harry. And you 
<laughs> kind of look around. <laughs> well, it's, it's the mullet, I think, that gives it away. So uh, you haven't commented on my new spec. I do like those. Those are sharp. So these are my real prescription glass, like my regular glasses, not my reading glasses. So these are regular glasses. Now, let me tell you the benefits and then I'll, and then I'll tell you the setbacks. The benefits are it blocks the dangerous blue light, Jordan, looking at screens all day. Very dangerous. You know, I'm convinced that's just a bullshit thing that people came up with so that people that don't have to wear glasses all of a sudden have to wear glasses, blue rays, blue, whatever. Anyway, but it does block that just in case. Just in case God exists and the Blu-ray exists, we're going to just go ahead and still pray. Yeah, right? Les, Les gets on to me for not wearing blue blockers. We should do it just in case, you know, and still maybe throw a prayer up in there to the big guy just in case, you know, it's unlikely. Now that I've pissed off 100% of our listeners, um, <laughs> let's move on. So the other, the good is you can wear them inside and everything just looks kind of rosy and nice and kind of mellow. And then you go outside and they're kind of like sunglasses. So you really don't need to have two separate pairs. And I have a pair of yellow tinted ones for the evenings. Do they actually block UV? Are they actual sunglasses or are they just have that yeah, blue tint? Well, they, yes, they're polarized and yeah, and they block UV. I got everything on them. There's all kinds of chemicals, just millimeters from my eyes. Everything you can spray on sunglasses, they sprayed on them. Are the double glasses officially retired? No, because I still need bifocals when I'm looking at my computer. And they couldn't do bifocals without, you know, I've already been through why. There's a separate prescription. Got to see the doctor, blah, blah. Who has time for doctors? Look at me. I'm exchanging dogs, dead dogs for real dogs. I've got busy uh, podcasting schedules. The Pearl has opened up a new breakfast spot. Got to hit that. What's the new breakfast spot? Uh, well, they opened up the whole bottling plant for breakfast. So all those restaurants in there are open for breakfast or most of them. Sweet. Very yeah. nice. So I went and uh, went and got me a $10 smoothie. Literally ten dollars. Did you finish uh, it or small? I did. I finished it real quick, and I got a, <laughs> a muffin. So it was nice, you know. I walked uh, Spooky Bones over here. She's a real light pooper. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, is every let, let our listeners at home know that Millicent said this joke was going to get old, and uh, I can see that even Jordan's faking a laugh at this point. So. I don't ever fake Luckily, laughs. This will be your last day. But don't worry, the biscuit jokes continue forever. I had several people at MBWA tell me that they thought biscuit was the best part of the show, Jordan. Higher than even you, who is the second uh, most liked person. Yeah, that's a little and crushing. Then Jen is the third. <laughs> and then Sarah, who's not on it that much, is fourth. And then Hannah, who's only been on it twice, is the and then your host came in six which is perfect because that's you know the host is supposed to be the most controversial remember donahue probably don't because he was off the air right when you were born <laughs> i said there's still time to move up yeah i suppose <laughs> well so, it's me and you again next dick. week carrie what's that so it's me and you again next week gents on vacation yep, that's right well i will uh be right here on this couch you know one thing uh was uh we forgot to mention is the drankers party recept little party it was a little you know reception at the cabana by the pool on sunday afternoon and uh we had kind of a, a last minute venue change that confused confused some people so i apologize for that but uh people still uh rooted us out found us out and uh, it was nice to have all the uh, Diageo brass there and the ranch water people and uh, a couple of distributors and some old secours and and I'm no I'm and there's some other suppliers. I had a good time. What about you, Jordan? I had a great time. I um I think one thing we learned is you don't invite a whole lot of wholesalers to a party during NBWA. Um, <laughs> they're pretty busy. Yeah. But uh yeah during we do we it was during the wholesaler meeting I think right <laughs> yeah. yeah 
Yeah. And I, even I missed the first part of it because I was speaking on a, on a panel on uh, cannabinoids, or cannab- cannabinoids, 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 cannabinoids. Yeah, that's yeah. But I heard one of the lawyers say cannabinoids. I was like, see, see, that's how I do it. Maybe but he and I just might both be wrong. Cannabinoids. I think- I think it's tomato, tomato. I, I think cannabinoids is a little easier to say. Cannaba, cannabinoids. Not, apparently not for me, because even on stage, I fumbled over it every time I tried to say it. That's, you know, that's just me. But yeah, Katie Bill Brown, do you know. Katie Bill Brown, the whole Diageo house. crew. Diageo's, they're high on ranch water. Very high. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Seemed like anytime you saw Nuno and company, Katie was right there with him. And then when Nuno was up on stage, there was a big Lone River video playing in the background the whole time. Um, I mean, it's it's their, I think it's their one and only acquisition act for Diageo beer, that is. So uh, they're really pumping that thing up. And then, Harry, you want to talk about your uh, your panel? The panel was pretty interesting. Uh it was interesting in the fact that that you know the bottom line is that there is no bottom line, which is kind of how I sum the whole thing up at the end. Um, there's so much to work out. It's not it's not the federal government just saying, okay, it's legal. What's what's legal? You know, we we talked about how delta eight is just one molecule different from THC, which is delta nine, and why is that legal in Texas when nothing else is legal in Texas? And then you have that farm bill and then you have, you know, the FDA saying that uh, CBD in any form is technically not supposed to be in food or drink because we don't have proof that it doesn't provide, you know, it doesn't do harm. And we definitely don't have proof that it does good. So if you don't make health claims, we're not going to fuck with you. Screw with you. Sorry, I'm trying not to cuss so much. I'm trying to improve myself in a lot of ways. Anyway, uh, if it's derived from hemp, even if it has no THC in it, it could still cause problems, but less problems if it's CBD oil for some reason. And I might have that flip, but no, I think that's right. And so, you know, that's just a one example of that panel of how it's just kind of chaotic and it kind of depends on the risk level that you're willing to take. Uh, if, if you're a distributor that if you do get in trouble, you could conceivably lose your liquor or beer license. And that would be catastrophic. Are you willing to risk that for just kind of a marginal volume at this point? Or do you want to wait? But if you wait, you have the, you know, the danger of missing out on the established new brands. So it's a real catch 22 for a lot of these guys. So it's an important, um, it was an important, uh, uh, whatever seminar, if you want to call it that. And, uh, I'll be writing about it for Monday. And so by the time this comes out, you'll have already read it as well. Do you get the sense that more beer distributors are saying, you know what, screw it. I'm going for it. Or do you, or do you think it has to be like one big one say like Reyes or whoever, Say, okay, we're getting into it, and then everybody will follow suit. Yeah, I think you're right about that. Um, the risk is minimal. I mean, I really don't think that that's going to be a priority. But Harry Shoemaker, he's not even a lawyer, sitting on his couch with a skeleton dog telling you this, you know, that's not even going to get you a Coca-Cola at the dime store. So it's like, I mean, if I would do it because I'm a reckless person and I am an impulsive person. I, and I know that about myself. If I had a stewardship that was, I had complete control over, I'd probably just do it. Right. There's a lot of FOMO in beers middle. Yeah, tier. exactly. I don't want to miss out on anything. I mean, it's just, it's not going to happen. Right. It's just, but you know, on the other hand, you never know what's going to happen. I mean, shit, you can't even get an abortion in Texas right now. Yeah. You know, oh, that's never going to happen. There's Roe versus Wade. I mean, that's never going to happen. It happened. You know, you just never know what these crazies are going to do. Uh, you know, when I say crazies, I mean all politicians from all sides. <laughs> I bought a t-shirt that says defund politicians. That's who we, I think we can all, both sides can agree on that. And get on with that. Yeah. Even, even spooky do over here is like, yeah. Thank you, Jordan, for reminding me that I have work to do this weekend. 
Oh yeah, anytime, man. Yeah. <laughs> no, so, I'm looking. Uh, I'm looking forward to a full weekend. Yeah, I bet you are. You've you've earned it. I'd say take Monday off, but I need you. <laughs> yeah, We're, somebody else is already <laughs> taking Monday off. Yeah, uh, that's all right. We'll get her done. We'll muscle through it. I have nothing going on, so I, I'll be here having lunch with my mother at some point and that's it yeah there's a few distributor meetings or uh, uh, supplier meetings for distributors next week um mike's and okay. heineken so we'll have we'll have plenty to write about very good oh this is a segment uh weekend update what are you gonna do this weekend and fun football man i know that's your favorite College answer and- yeah, well, you know, I'm getting into it. So tell me, tell me more. Tell me more. Like, does he have a car? As I, as I sing a musical <laughs> yeah. from the 80s, bring into show tunes. I'm getting into football. I want to know more about And football. I'm singing Greece. <laughs> yeah. That's one of those times when Melissa's like, are you sure you're not gay? <laughs> <laughs> so you're just going to chill, chill in front of the TV? Yeah, I'm doing a, uh, I don't think we're allowed to talk about that. I was gonna say, oh, you're doing a project for another job you're looking at? <laughs> no, doing a little sober October. Oh, we can talk about that. Well, I'm doing it with Les, obviously. I know why. Why, why do you none think of that our hurt? listeners, none of our listeners know why? And I'm teasing because we. Is it okay to talk about it, Jordan, or no? Yeah, let's talk about it. Well, I just saw you. You know blabbing your mouth about it at mbwa so i figured it was okay to talk about it it's hard not to talk about it i mean you want to you want to tell everybody you see yes but yeah i know it's exciting Les and i have a little baby on the way little baby girl that's so awesome i know man that's so awesome i feel uh i feel like i'm a part of it (laughs) you are your grandpa harry that's right I prefer Paw Paw, but yeah, go ahead. Okay, Paw Paw Harry. Um, so glad. Little baby due March 9th. Awesome. Great. And great timing. Thank you, Jordan. I know you did that on purpose because it's after the summit's over. After the after summit, after heading your, into summer. Yeah. Right. Spring planning will be over. We're, I will have announced by then that nobody's getting any raises. You know, so that news will everything will be clean slate perfect with a baby on the way yeah perfect perfect i tease i tease um that's good obviously i'll be enslaved this weekend in this chair for you so that you i can afford to give you raises i do it all for you for you guys hey but you have biscuit coming back this weekend that's got to be pretty exciting i am I am very excited about that. And it's not going to break 90. So that'll be nice. Take her for long walks. But I want to get back to hashtag Harry Cares. And oh, that's my sign that we have to go. That was pretty spot on with a Harry Cares and a little honk. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Uh, uh. <laughs> and, oh, by the way, the little, the little noisemaker that's still in my backpack was making noises at the airport on my way to Las Vegas again. I'm like, why don't I take that out? It's supposed to be for the podcast, not for my humiliation. And then all it's done is humiliate me. I've had it on the podcast, what, twice? The little, yeah. you know. It's, it's been used sparingly. What kind of noises were going off? It was... Um, don't it you, was one don't you never... say the toot noises. Don't you say the fart it wasn't noises. The to- <laughs> it, it was not the fart noises, thank God, or... You know, that's actually even funnier. But it was a, it was a weird, like like a choo-choo noise, like a train, I think. Okay. And, but it was constant. It was like every time I was walking, I guess the weight on it would go, toot, 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 toot. <laughs> <laughs> And people were just looking at it. And at first I thought it was my phone, you know, and then I was like, oh, shit, it's that little red thing. This guy's really I just chugging a lot. Like, I just went side to side, shook it like a baby. And, I, and it jostled it up, and so it didn't press anymore. You know, you shake it like a baby. Just kidding, Jordan. Don't do that. That was in jest. I could see you. So, well, Harry said, you know, he's my boss. Harry cares, but apparently. Harry cares, apparently. Apparently not. Well, I'm very excited. Have you thought of names yet or anything like that? 
We have a handful in mind. We're not sharing because every time you share, somebody says, oh, I hate that name. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, that's that's without it, without it, fail. It'd be embarrassing. It'd be embarrassing on a podcast too. you know, yeah. for tens of dozens of people or would be out there just probably writing in. Finally, we get comments. In the I was comments about to say, saying, no, I don't like that name, Jordan. I haven't had <laughs> a lot of engagement, everybody. but then uh, everybody wants to give their yeah. two cents on a name. Yeah. And by the way, why aren't you? I keep saying smash the like button and leave a favorable review. Five stars. We've gotten one since I said that. Thank you, Julie. Or uh, I can't remember her name. I should be have more. Yeah, I should remember. Maybe if I got shout, maybe they got shout outs. Maybe they would. You know what? I'm going to give shout outs. There is an idea. Next time we pod. Yeah. There's an idea. Jordan, will you remind me of my external memory bank? Yes. I like remind that. Remind me to look at the comments next week when we do our podcast. I want to do, uh, um, we'll get back to, a, I'd like a three day schedule. I think that's reasonable. Two to three days, depending on, we're shorthanded next week. Like I said, Jen will be gone. So maybe we'll just do two. I don't know. We'll see how it works. Two to three is perfect. Yeah, I, I agree. And also I, I'd like to do like a Friday pod where it's just, you know, bullshit. at least one pod where, where yeah, just a bullshit and pod. Exactly. Yeah, I like that. Um, no guests. And, and and then obviously, you know, the content hasn't been, it's been a little more low key because Biscuit's been gone because she brought the energy up, you know, and so she'll be back. So we'll see how that dynamic helps spark a little, little protein into this, uh, into this carb laden podcast. We're in a sugar low right now, Jordan. That's going to change. Okay. Let's get she, right. She pumps things up. She pumps it up. You know what she does is she puts her paws up. She puts her paws up and they stay there and they stay there because she's got it going. No, what is it? I'm a winner. All I do is win, win, win. No matter what. All I do is win, win, win. When the party gets up, 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 I put my hands up. We be rolling. Not even close. <laughs> well, all right. Have a good weekend. Enjoy Biscuit right. being back. You too, Jordan. And, uh, hey, man, thanks for drinking beer.